Hey guys, Starcat here with my first 3.3 um, sort of tree overlay videos. I'm going to do a couple of these. I'm going to pick an archetype, then just give you a few like base tree variations. Um, the idea is to show you as many different ways of doing the tree as possible. Let you guys work out what gear, etc. you want to use. Some of us play SSF, some of us play hardcore, some of us play softcore. So this video is all around traps, and I'm going to show variations of CI, um, life, AOE, arc, um, I've also got some trees approved by Red Eye, and I also have some trees approved by Fulfos. So I'll also talk about some ascendancy stuff. Now I've been umming and ahhing over Saboteur vs Scion, and one really important thing to note about why you would pick Sab, why you pick Scion. So Chain Reaction gives you when your traps trigger your nearby traps trigger. There are three ways really of choosing how you want to do this. Um, you can do the Chain Reaction route. So when you throw like five traps to the cost trap, they all uh, trigger when one of them does. You can go the Sunblast route. The Sunblast route uh, requires the Sunblast unique belt and two unique um, jewels and that um, gives it that your traps instantly detonate. Now the bad thing about that is you're sacrificing life on your belt and you're sacrificing life on two jewels so that takes away quite a lot of defense. And then the third option is to stack trap trigger AoE. A lot of the new nodes um, have a lot of trap trigger AoE on them um, added in here um, you have a bunch here and then you have some more available down here and you could use, um, I believe it's called hair trigger, um, jewels, which give increased trap trigger AOE as well. So if you're playing a non saboteur, your options are either to go for instantly exploding traps or to stack a bunch of trap trigger AOE so that when you throw your five traps, you've got so much AOE, they just instantly sort of pop. Um, so yeah. Now, before I was eating very heavily into Scion, um, but considering I play SSF, I can't guarantee that I'll have access to the Sunblast belt, and I also cannot uh, guarantee I'll have access to the Hair Trick of Jewels. So for the sake of not having to sacrifice a bunch of defense, even when I get those you know, required items, I've lent very heavily into just doing Sab Trees, or there is one Sun Tree in here. So for the CI option, and why I think um, I generally prefer CI, um, or very life-stacking trees to doing Mind Over Mana shenanigans, you want to get as much power as you can out of Pyromaniac. This gives you up to 20% uh, life regeneration. It's very easy to hit this 20% life regeneration cap on bosses with the removal of the um, trap cooldown and the trap limit being raised uh, to 15 base, which can be further improved by nodes on the tree, such as Master Sapper giving you two additional traps and um, Serpator giving you one additional traps. So yeah, you can very easily hit this cap. So the base idea with this tree is get all the uh, best trap nodes uh, and then get the most efficient crit and energy shield nodes. You'll notice it's actually missed out on quite a few trap clusters, uh, namely Hasty Reconstruction and Master Sapper, and I'll explain why now. So Hasty Reconstruction gives you uh, trap damage and some trap cooldown recovery. This will only affect your 8 second traps. Now if you're planning on doing, you know, Uber Elder and very long sustained boss fights, yes, this will be a DPS increase um, for your 8 second traps and it still does give you, you know, decent just like raw trap damage nodes. However, this isn't World of Warcraft. Most of us are just mapping, doing like 1 minute map clears, 2 minute map clears, you know. You're only going to be using these big traps on like bosses or maybe the odd breach here and there, but you know, when you have three of them, it's unlikely you're going to have the chance to spam them. And we already do get some cooldown reduction already from being a sab. So, yeah, personally, I don't think these nodes are really worth investing into unless you're going for the very high sustained boss damage or it's something you're picking at, you know, level 95 plus, for example. The reason why I don't get a uh, master sapper, I do get it on some of the trees, but I miss it on quite a lot. It's very, very powerful. And it's not that far away um, on the life trees. Most life trees root through Blood Drinker, so it's only like a two travel point. And then it puts you very close to acrobatics. Um, it gives you trap damage, it gives you trap trigger AoE, it gives you some trap throwing speed, but more, most importantly, it gives you um, two additional trap space at a time and the frenzy charge generation. Now, we have so many ways of generating frenzy charges that it's just not really needed, in my opinion. So you can generate it with the um, new Charge Trap Support Gem. You can generate it with Tinker Skin if you want to use Tinker Skin. Thorfoss still plans on using Tinker Skin for his build. And yeah, when you already have so many ways of generating Frenzy Charges, it loses much of its main draw. But it's still very powerful. And if you do go for it, make sure you go for Acrobatics as well. So yeah, otherwise, fairly bog standard trees. Uh, one thing to note, 
I don't root through the 14% trap damage. I choose to root through the 4% trap throwing speed. The reason being is trap throwing speed technically got nerfed. Um, for most trappers, you've had more trap throwing speed before this patch. And yeah, you really want to just get as much trap throwing speed as possible. Um, Falfus has been telling me that while he's very, very, very pleased by all of these buffs, he's a little bit sad that his particular build, I think he said he lost in like 30% trap throwing speed, but we can make up for it in other sources. And I don't take uh, this point here because it's just a 20% crit node. 20% crit nodes aren't that efficient. Uh, yes, you could save one point here, but 16% damage nodes are very efficient. So I'd much rather take these, but if you're very star for points, you could do that to save one. So yes, otherwise very bog standard. You'd want to use this tree for a lightning trapper or an arc trapper. You're using Zealot's Oath so that your um, regeneration applies to um, your energy shield and you're going to want some mana regen. All right, now this is the exact same tree, but this is with uh, AOE not going lightning focus. So use this if you want to go for like a fire trap setup. Um, from that, here is what a Scion uh, tree would look like. Um, the main appeal of Scion is getting Chieftain, in my opinion. I've taken this in a few different videos, be it for like uh, fire based trappers or like blast rain based bow trappers, etc. I really like the amount of regen, the amount of life you get with these kinds of trees. This will be a very awkward tree to start with, however, um, since you know you're just probably going to have to just level Sunday. You don't really get that much power early on. And I'd probably recommend going for a hair trigger setup. Um, since we can get so much uh, AOE now, if you are going for hair trigger setup, make sure you come down and get like Master Sapper, and then maybe cut some points elsewhere so you could then get Phase Acro as well. But yeah. And that's sort of what that core base tree looks like. Now, for people wanting to do bow trappers, bow trappers are very, very powerful. It's hard to really get levels of defense, and I'm sure there is a way to get more defense than this. It's currently a 174% life tree um, with only three jewels. So, yeah, a little bit starved, a little, little bit starved. Um, there's a few different ways you could root it. Like, you could cut some points here instead of, you know, root through this way. Um... And, you know, you eventually get access to another jewel when you cut off these points. So, yeah, I don't know. You can pick which of the two ways you want to go through it. But the main appeal of doing a bow-based trapper is just to have access to just so much raw single target. Um, you can use the new blast ring with 100% conversion. Um, loads of free Ellie pen, loads of free AoE. You can go rain of arrow traps. You can go shrapnel um, shot traps. They do really, really bonkers damage. And to be fair, you know, having like 174-ish um, life with um, acrobatics, you know, that's that's fairly tanky. Uh, this is a rough estimation of Tholfoss's bossing tree. Now, Tholfoss has said that he will be using um, fire and flamethrower traps for um, his starter. And that's what he's really going for. Now, he says that for bossing, he drops up all of the AoE nodes. He uses Tinkerskin Eldritch Battery. And that's kind of that sort of setup there. Um, for map clear, uh, he takes the AoE nodes. You could take um, Revenge of the Hunted, or you can take Devotion. Devotion is like one extra point, but it gives you access to a two-point jewel, so that's the ideal routing um, later on. But it's really just like cutting change he's being very annoying he won't give me his exact tree but you know i send him trees like yeah that's closer this is that this is that um one very important thing to note though about falfus's setup which i was a bit surprised by is he doesn't actually use shield charge he uses phase run um and phase run has been buffed in the new patch um it's gone from a 0 0.5 second base to 0 0.25 second base and i really enjoyed using phase run on my kb minor i think phase run's pretty underrated so yeah, phase run is an option, um, especially if you're, you know, doing bow trappers or staff trappers or shimmer on trappers. Definitely, definitely make sure you're using phase run. Yes, phase run does eat into your frenzy charges. However, we have so much access to frenzy charges um, through master sapper, tink skin if you're using it, and charge traps. It really isn't uh, much of a big deal. And he uses eldritch battery to handle all of his mana costs. Mana costs is a really big deal. Um, you don't want to be reserving too much mana, and that's also why I don't like using raw mind over matter on these builds, just because the mana costs on trappers are so absurd, especially when you're just spamming the hell out of it. So yeah, personally not too big a fan of that. Um, this is Red Eyes Tree. I really like Red Eyes Tree. So Red Eyes Approach, he's also playing SSF by the way, is going for as much raw life as possible. Um, 
his plan is to go for a comb's heart and with this setup you have something like seven point uh seven k life i think i have his thing set up somewhere um yeah easy like 7.5k life no worries um just you know using very very basic gear and the core idea with his one is by going for uh righteous decree and tireless you get a bunch of reduced mana cost of skills you also do get some reduced mana cost of skills from pyromaniac um that once you you know reduce everything down by like you know 40 50 percent then it doesn't become too much of a concern and then you can just, you know, use a rallying cry or a clarity or something to, you know, keep your regeneration feeling healthy. So I really like this approach. He's planning on going arc traps. Um, arc traps, I think, will be really nice for the tight indoor maps, uh, like Underground Sea, um, Haunted Mansion, you know, Toxic Sewer, stuff like that. I think it'll be really, really strong. Um, I'm going for a slight variation of this. This is what I'm planning for. Um, I want to go with an AoE trap setup, so basically it's the same tree, but with uh, minus some lightning things. Now one thing which is worth talking about, and um, we had everyone in the stream yesterday, um, Dan and everyone were thinking, you know, maybe chaos damage is going to be really scary. And I actually think that uh, Purity of Flesh is going to be like the MVP um, of this patch. Purity of Flesh and CI builds, that's why I'm liking the idea of doing so many CI builds now. It looks like there's going to be so much raw chaos damage in the temple that you want to have as much chaos res as possible. Now this tree is like a couple more points uh, than like the base red eye tree. You do sacrifice some damage, but you gain um, this chaos cluster here. You lose a tiny bit of life, but you also gain, you know, all of this spell and car speed here. So yeah, you've lost out on this crackling speed class that you've gained up for it elsewhere. I think this tree might potentially be a good thing. And I think when you're pushing like the very high 90s, going for Purity of Flesh is definitely going to be worthwhile. You could very easily turn this into a fire trap tree as well um, with enough levels because you then, you know, change that two point rooting. You then get access to something like, you know, explosive impact. You can then get blast radius, then you know, get amplify. And then, you know, you're going to have to cut some points elsewhere as you always do have to do some cutting. But maybe if you're doing the Thorfoss setup, where you don't run, um, for example, um, a shield charge. You instead use, you know, phase run. And then maybe, you know, you decide to cut. <laughs> I really don't know what. Multi, if you're not only doing map clear and you just want, you know, a little bit of AoE, maybe just cut that cluster as well. I don't know. I don't know. It's all a bit iffy. But yes, I will leave links to this whole setup down below. The next video will be felt uh, centered all around self-cast builds. So it'll be some, like... um. Blade Vortex, Action, Arc, Ball Lightning, and Blight are the main things I want to be covering. And I will also put in an Ignite Tree in there for anyone who wants to do, you know, um, Fireball, um, Incinerate, or Flame Blast memes. But yes, I'm Taki. Hopefully that gives you some rough idea on how you want to root your trees in 3.3. Have a good day. Bye-bye.